Good morning. Mm. Happy Sunday. I slept in today. I didn't wake up until like 10 after 7. And I'm like, okay, I can make a mad dash and go as is. Or I can just put it on pause for a little bit. And I chose pause. So, hope that's okay. Mm. Coffee. God, I love coffee. So check this out. See this pretty little wooden-ish type bowl? This is my sourdough bread. Hi, Grant. I'm going to bake it this morning. I had my class yesterday over at Mixed Cooking School in South Chandler. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was interesting because um, I think there were 11 of us and three of them were men who were engineers. It blew my mind. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, how wonderful. Sometimes we have to stretch ourselves outside of our norm and do things like this. Um, two of these men were very accomplished cooks. All three of them like to cook, actually. And uh, one of the guys was like... I think he could have been teaching the class. I mean, he was all up in his baking skills. It was it was really fun. It was really a cool class. It's a beautiful location, and um, the teacher, her name is Carol. She is like, she was wonderful. She was really wonderful, and she's just she's so cute. She's this little petite lady who has four grown sons, and um, and she said all of her boys are are big and. I mean, she is so teeny, teeny, tiny. It's just, she was marvelous. She's been baking sourdough for many years. So, anyway, sourdough bread, I'm telling you what, I have a whole new respect for it. What a process it is, you know. Um, a lot of people are kind of intimidated by it because of the whole starter. You have to have the starter and, you know, it has to sit and blah, 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 blah. Well... There are so many steps that went into this little bowl of dough. And starting with, um, you know, first of all, we're mixing, we're mixing everything. And then you let it rest for so many minutes. And then you have to turn it over and, and mix it up a little bit more. And then you let it rest. You do that five times. And then, um, then your final rest has to be for like two to three hours depending on your room temperature and then it you take it out you fold it over once more and let it rest again and then you put it into this bowl and once it's in the bowl then it has to stay in there for just a little bit and then you cook it in a Dutch oven or cast iron um, hi Lori a cast iron um, pot of some sort I have a Le Creuset so I'm gonna try that now, mine didn't get all finished last night because I had another engagement at 3.30 after my class and didn't get home until later. And so I had to retard my dough. I thought somebody was talking derogatory in the class, but that wasn't the case. And <laughs> so I had to uh, put it in the fridge for a while. And when I got home last night, I took it back out and let it sit out for a couple of hours in the evening. And it grew a little bit. And then I went ahead and turned it out and put it into my bowl and put it in the refrigerator last night with some saran wrap. So this morning it has to sit out for another hour. And then um, I have to put my cold pot into a super hot oven, 475 to 500. And that has to be in there for 30 minutes. You turn it on, 30 minutes. Once that's done, I take that out very quickly, I have to get this out of this pretty little bowl, and I'll have all the pretty little swirly lines around it, and pop it over, put it inside this super duper hot pan, get the lid back on, get it back in the oven, and it has a lid on it for like 20 minutes, and you take the lid off for like the last 10, 15 minutes, and voila! Super easy process, right? It's like an all day job if you wanna make sourdough bread. I just have a, a whole new respect for the people who bake my bread for me. Let's just say that. I did give it some Reiki this morning because I was worried about having to retard it twice. So anyway, I have baker terms, you know. I'm a pro now. 
Anyway, welcome. And, <clears throat> oh, hi, Dominica. Welcome. Um, today's chapter, you guys are going to love this, especially if you ever suffer, maybe it's just me, from monkey mind, where your head is so full of crap, it just goes blah, 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 blah over and over and over and over. And this is from the Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. It is pronounced Nepo. I finally figured that out. I was listening to a, um, a video thing this morning by uh, Dr. Christiane Northrup, and she references him and his, uh, his lymphoma cancer that he had. And um, I'm like, oh good, I finally learned the name because I didn't know if it was Nepo or Nepo. I started out saying Nepo, then I went to Nepo. Now we're back to Nepo and it's gonna stay that way. So anyway, he is a poet and uh, amazing poet. And this book came out of his journey with cancer and healing from cancer. And, um, you know, they started out as a series of emails, him just writing a close friend of his, his thoughts and, and things that he was feeling and thinking and stuff during this process, his awakening. And eventually they all turned into a book. And it's like a 365 day of year type book. So today's is called You Know Too Much. There's a little writing, extra writing here for you from Leroy Little Bear. Two scientists traveled halfway around the world to ask a Hindu sage what he thought about their theories. When they arrived, he kindly brought them into his garden and poured them tea. Though the two small cups were full, the sage kept pouring. Tea kept overflowing, and the scientists politely but awkwardly asked, Your Holiness, the cups can hold no more. The sage stopped, pouring, and said, your minds are like the cups. You know too much. Empty your minds and come back, then we will talk. We've all heard some version of that little story before, right? Knowing everyone's birthday is not the same as feeling the wonder of birth. Nor is it being accomplished in the many positions of nor is being accomplished in the many positions of love making the same as being passionate. It was the great Canadian scholar Northrop Fry who pointed out that understanding the principles of acrodynamics has nothing to do with the experience of I'm sorry, aerodynamics <laughs> has nothing to do with the experience of flying. <laughs> Created a new word there for you. If at times you feel numb or distance from the essence of what you know, perhaps your mind, like the sage's teacup, is too full. Perhaps like a bowl too full of fish, your deepest thoughts have no room to move. Perhaps we all need, from time to time, to dump all out that doesn't stick. To let God, like a great wind, rim our head like an empty bowl. Information is not wisdom. The mind, while a great and irre irreplaceable tool, can store instead of feel, can sort instead of understand, can, like a beaver, build a dam of everything precious. If you cannot speak when your mouth is stuffed with unchewed food, how can you think clearly if your mind is stuffed with undigested information? But how do we empty the mind? By not overthinking, by not storing or sorting. By not replaying fears or dreams or doubts of, or praise. By choosing the most important thing on our endless list of things to do and doing it fully after tearing up the list. All the wisdom traditions say to be still. That the stillness will bore holes in your useless knowing. But how do we begin? Every time you find yourself sorting life in your head, stop and notice what the brightest spot of light around you is touching. After a week of this, make a deal with yourself. Trade five facts about how to live for one hour of unplanned living. Mmm. Then have some tea. I love that. 
So here's our exercise. You ready? This is another thing I love about about Mark's writings is that he gives us little um, tips at the end, like a little exercise to do to help you see how to experience what he's talking about. So if your mind were a suitcase and could only hold five things, what would they be? Mm. Mm. What would they be if we could only hold five things? I know one of my things would be love, compassion, mm, healing, connection with my family, my friends, my community, the whole universe, right? Um, oh, last thing would be my doggy. <laughs> Connor would have to fit in that suitcase somewhere. Interesting things to think about though. What would those five things be? What would you put in your suitcase? Uh, when experiencing something troublesome, how many times do you go over it in your mind? Hmm, why? What would happen if you only went over it once? Ooh, anybody know somebody who's a major overthinker? I do. My mom for one. Oh, my mom is so smart. She's so smart, but she, I don't know if she second guesses herself, but she's just like one, she's one of those people that just has to think it through and, and learn all of the facts, which is all good. Analyze them all. That's fine. And then she, she keeps turning them over and turning them over and turning them over. And at some point you have to take action. And that's where it's hard for her. It's hard for her to take that action sometimes. Um, Marty Shelley and um, my friend Jen, you're probably watching or will. Jen is very analytical. And um, she's the best researcher I've ever known. Oh, she's amazing. I mean, this girl researches everything down to the teeniest, tiniest little piece. And if I, ever I need to know anything about something, I just call her and say, sister, I need your help. <laughs> because I'm not the kind that will like mull it over and over and over and over. I like look at the options and I choose like that. And I don't always choose the best choice. And so if it's something that's really important, I have to ask for help on some of those things because, you know, I just go with my gut and I just go with it. And sometimes, sometimes it's the best and sometimes it's, uh, yeah, you know, I could have done something a little differently. You know, hindsight is always 2020. So it's interesting. So, okay. So at some point, um, at some point you just have to, you have to stop just thinking about it and just let it go, right? Let it go. When going to sleep, does your mind sort and file and replay information? Oh, hell yeah, right? Yeah, sometimes I can't get my mind to turn off, you know? And it's not even anything important half the time. It's just stuff. You're just thinking about everything that's happened during the day and things that are coming up and blah, blah, blah. Ugh. When waking, does your mind feel does your mind more easily experience what's before you? Yeah, again, hell yeah. You know, you wake up in the morning, you feel refreshed, you don't feel that clutter that you might have had when you went to sleep at night. Um, I think we work a lot of stuff out in our dreams. I know I do, and I intentionally ask my guides um, to help me to remember what's important for my dreams, to dismiss what's not, you know, just knowing that it's my soul's work and it's not something that I need to think about consciously. I could just let it go and know that it's done. So, if so, try to give life to the sensation of waking twice during your day. Ooh. Meditation. Just being still for a moment. Letting that go. Being like just waking up first thing in the morning, refreshed, empty, clear. Bring only one thing from your suitcase with you today. Leave the suitcase home. Ooh.
Connor? Want to go for a ride? Ha! <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. So, yeah. Good stuff, huh, guys? So, have a great Sunday. I'm going to go see a movie with my mama today. Spend some time with her. It seems like sometimes in our busyness, I don't get to spend as much time with her as I want. Happy birthday to my little sister, Julie. Julie's, I don't know how old Julie is, but she's younger than me. She'll always be younger than me. So, you know, that's all that matters. <laughs> right. If she were older, I could probably go up and learn about it and, and pinpoint it. But anyway, I think she's eight years younger than me. So anyway, happy birthday, sissy. And uh, have a great day, guys. Think about what you want to keep and take from your suitcase today and take with you on your journey. What you want to leave behind for just for just now. For just now. So, hmm. I'm trying to think, is there something else I need to say? Anyway, got a little while left before I put this bad boy in the oven. And it smells amazing. I love sourdough bread. It's going to be so fun. Not something I'll be doing every weekend probably, but it's an experience. So <laughs> peace and blessings. Have fun. And I love you. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Mm,